Frontier Fighters. Frontier Fighters, dramatically retracing the steps of the heroes who fought and conquered the West. Among the several of the famous soldiers whose destiny it was to plant the stars and stripes in this new far western territory was General Stephen Watts Kearney. On May 23, 1846, the Mexican government formally declared war against the United States. June 1846, Fort Leavenworth on the banks of the Missouri River. General Kearney's compliments, Lieutenant Emery. He requests your attendance in his office next door. Very well, orderly. You sent for me, sir? Yes. Uh, Sit down, Mr. Emery. Thank you, General Kearney. Mr. Emery, as the new commander of the Army of the West, I leave in a few hours to engage the enemy in New Mexico and California and to once and for all establish the stars and stripes in those territories. I know, sir. I was just coming in to extend my congratulations. Thank you. Emery, how would you like to come along as my topographical officer to draw the maps of the entire campaign? I'm a soldier, sir, and I go where I'm ordered. Yes. Now, Emery, our first objective is Santa Fe, New Mexico. That means 900 miles of hard riding, with the prospect of considerable resistance by the Santa Fe troops at the end of our journey. You understand? Yes, sir. Good. Orderly? Yes, sir. See that Lieutenant Emery's field equipment is packed at once. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Emery, here's what I want in the map line. We must trace a clear trail across the mountain. August 18th, 1846. Uh, what is it you want, uh, Captain Gomez? Can't even a governor have a siesta in peace? Your Excellency, the Americanos, they come. Ah, uh, you told me that yesterday. This afternoon, Santa Fe is still free of gringo soldiers. But, Excellency, an army, a great army, is only a few hours away. Huh? How many, Captain? A great many. They have cannons, too, of brass. Who told you all this? My brother. He saw this gringo army. He rode all night to warn us. Your brother is a remarkable fellow. My compliments, Captain Gomez, to the general commanding. The Santa Fe garrison will go at once for tactical maneuvers. You understand? Field exercises and sham battles. Yes, Excellency. And uh, Gomez. Yes, Excellency. I'll go along to uh, inspire our brave soldiers as they study the doctrines and tactics of war. Welcome to Santa Fe, General Kearney. I'm Charles Bean. Why, of course. I didn't recognize you under that big hat. Oh, where's the enemy? I expected a fight. <laughs> the governor's giving the local garrison some lessons in tactics. Must be 50 miles away by now. <laughs> Discretion is the better part of valor. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And now, Ben, I'm pushing farther west soon to California. And I... Oh, what is it, Lieutenant Emery? A joint message has just arrived, sir, from Commodore Stockton and Lieutenant Colonel Fremont. What's it say? 
The message says, sir, that the Californians are becoming increasingly difficult to manage. Both Commodore Stockton and Colonel Fremont request that you make all possible haste to California, sir. Hmm. Well, then, we'll start as soon as our equipment can be repaired. Prepare that order, Mr. Emery, immediately. Yes, sir. It's on to California. General Kearney, accompanied by about 300 dragoons or mounted infantry and a few brass field guns drawn by mules, began the westward journey on September 25th, 1846. On October 30th, Kearney's little army was encamped at the north end of the Black Mountains, covered with dust and grime, hungry and suffering severely from thirst. The Apaches are here, General Kearney, to trade and to swear allegiance to the United States. Good work, Lieutenant Emery. Uh, Who's the chief? Red Sleeve. A fighting man, if ever I saw one. Beckon him over. Yes, sir. My Apache heart sings for joy, General. I, too, rejoice, Red Sleeve. You're prepared, then, to swear allegiance to the United States, to renounce Mexico's rule over your people forever? We Apaches have looked forward to this day for 300 years. We have taken New Mexico and will soon take California. We will help you fight for land. We care nothing for land. We fight for the laws of Montezuma and for food. November 1st found Kearney in what was later to become southeastern Arizona. Over the Kit Carson Trail stumbled and toiled the suffering dragoons, a 60-mile ride on short rations and without water. November 6th, the cavalcade camped along the San Pedro River, 500 miles from the nearest white settlement. November 23rd, Lieutenant Emery and a soldier climbed a small butte overlooking a stream. Look, Lieutenant Emery, a river. The general was right. That's the Colorado River. Hand me my sketch map and pencil. Here they are, sir. We'll take our first sight from that saddleback hill over there. Say, soldier, isn't that a Mexican coming our way? It sure is, sir. He's well mounted and wears fancy clothes, too. Keep down and we'll surprise him. He may give us some valuable information. I'm down, sir. <gasps> Caramba! Who are you? Never mind who we are. Get down off that horse. Ah, si, si, senor. What have you there in those saddlebags? Uh, letters from California for high Mexican officials. Give them to me. Oh, I protest. This is irregular. Nothing is irregular in war. Hand over those letters or I'll take you before General Kearney. General Kearney? He has penetrated this far? You bet he has, senor. And the general likes to read letters, especially letters from California. Está mm, bueno. Here are the letters. Hmm. They look interesting. I'll just open this one. Addressed to General Jose Castro at Alta. Listen to this, soldier. The Mexicans in Southern California have engineered counter-revolutions and have expelled Americans from Los Angeles, Santa Barbara, and other towns. The letter says the Mexican tricolor again floats over these cities. But it won't for long, soldier. It won't for long. Reaching the old California mission of Santa Isabella, a route to San Diego on December 4th, Kearney's forces received word that a party of Californians was encamped some nine miles distant in the valley of the San Pasqual. The next day, the two hostile parties came within sight of each other. Captain Johnson? Yes, sir? Look, those beggars are mounted as though they were expecting us. Why, they must have seen Lieutenant Hammond and his scouting party last night, sir. Well, we have no time to lose. Take your men and charge. Yes, sir. Forward! Forward! Californians have drawn up. Captain Gillespie? Yes, sir. We'll follow. Looks like a hand-to-hand fight. Yes, sir. They've disappeared over the hills, General Kearney. Yes, yes, I know, Doctor. Why, sir? You're wounded. Never mind me. First go and dust the wounds of the soldiers who need more attention than I do. 
When you've done, then come to me. But, sir... That's an order. Yes, sir. And if we... If we... Oh, quick! Orderly! Brandy! His wounds dressed, the 20 dead and 15 wounded, gathered and cared for, Kearney moved on toward his goal. But it was not to be a peaceful journey, far from it. At San Gabriel and later at the Pueblo de Los Angeles, the American soldiers met and conquered the insurgents. Leaving Lieutenant Colonel John Charles Fremont in command, he proceeded to Monterey, where on the first day of March, 1847, he met Commodore Shubrick, Commandant of the Naval Forces in Monterey Harbor. Commodore Shubrick, sir, my compliments to you. Thank you, sir. And my congratulations to you upon a noble piece of strategic tactics at Anglis. Well, uh, at least we're here. Uh, and now that you are, General Kearney, what do you intend to do? I intend first to take command of the civil government. Good. You have my heartiest cooperation. Thank you. I'll probably need it. Uh, have you, uh... Well, I mean to say, have you uh, prepared any sort of proclamation? I have. I'd like to have you hear parts of it. Gladly, sir. Well, uh, it begins, the President of the United States, having devolved on the undersigned the civil government of California, he enters upon the discharge of his duties with an ardent desire to promote as far as possible the interests of the country and well-being of its inhabitants. Good, splendid. Then, uh, further along, I say, uh, uh, it is the desire and intention of the United States to procure for California, as speedily as possible, a free government like that of their own territories. And they will very soon invite the citizens to exercise the rights of free citizens in the choice of their own representative. Excellent. And uh, I've ended the proclamation, Americans and Californians, from henceforth one people. Let us then indulge one desire, one hope. Let that be for the peace and tranquility of our country. Let us unite like brothers and mutually strive for the improvement and advancement of this, our beautiful country which within a short period cannot fail to be not only beautiful, but also prosperous and happy. Given at Monterey, capital of California, this first day of March in the year of our Lord, 1847, and of the independence of the United States, the 71st. S.W. Kearney, Brigadier General, USA, and Governor of California. Another dramatic story of patriotism and courage and sacrifice of these intrepid men who held that duty, and duty alone, was paramount when American soldiers and trailblazers marched into the benevolent rays of the setting sun. Another chronicle in the stirring annals of frontier fighters.